When I first started gardening, it was a total roller coaster. I mean, my yields were disappointing. Pests and disease were taking over and don't even get me started on all the poor plants I killed. Fast forward about two years and things took a major turn for the better. And guess what? It wasn't some magical solution or some secret ingredient. Nope, it was actually something quite unexpected and I'm excited to share it with you today. The game changer for me was my unstoppable thirst at learning. <laughs> I dove headfirst into gathering knowledge and boy did that make all the difference and today I'm going to tell you all the incredible resources that transformed my garden into this thriving ecosystem and the best part you can totally apply these to your own backyard garden. Sorry, Chloe wanted to be in the video today. <laughs> now let's not overwhelm ourselves, I get it, it's hard to implement everything all at once. So I'm going to break it down into three easy to follow learning phases. We'll start with the basics, laying down that solid foundation. Then we're going to move up the ladder, building on what we've learned. And finally, I'll share the most rewarding phase of my journey, the point where I'm at right now. Let's jump right into the basics. These were by far my first favorite places to get information about growing vegetables here in Florida. First and foremost, the UF IFAS website. They have information about Florida friendly landscaping, edible gardens, master gardener programs, and even planting calendars. So you go under the plant section and then under edibles and then under vegetables. There is a whole list of every kind of vegetable that you can grow and all the information about them, when to plant them, varieties, and how to care for them. It is a wealth of information and it was where I first started. What I did was focus on two or three different vegetables every season and read and followed what they said to do. Imagine that you are learning how to cook for the first time and so you follow a recipe to the T before you start adjusting it based on your tastes. Same goes for growing food. Start with the recipe that the UF came out with and you will have success. Don't deviate until you have made some good progress. While the website is a wealth of information, you can't ask it questions. It's a one-way street. Well, that's where the local extension offices come into play. On the same UF website down at the bottom, they have a section for the extension office by area. So just pick your county and then they have a phone number and an email address that you can reach out to. Now, I prefer to contact them by email. That way I don't have to worry about their hours of operations and I can send them pictures. When I first started, I was hesitant to reach out to them. I kind of felt like I might, they might think that I don't know what I'm doing, which I didn't, but I came to realize very quickly that they were here just for us, beginners and experienced gardeners. Also, they are free, <laughs> like completely. It's a bunch of county workers and a bunch of volunteers who went through the Master Gardener program that have just a ton of information about gardening. I send them pictures of bugs, questions about diseases, why does my fruit or vegetable look weird. I recently sent them a picture of a worm because I was concerned that I might have jumping worms in my garden and they confirmed that they were just normal, very active earthworms. <laughs> they have always gotten back to me within a day or two and they are always super kind and really helpful. Use them guys, that's what they're there for and they really have a passion for it. Oh, I almost forgot. They also have um, like a tester soil kit for you. It does have a fee, but it's pretty cheap from what I remember. It takes a bit of time to get the results back, but it was a great resource um, when you start to get to that point. Lastly, books. I have been an avid reader since as far back as I can remember. My big sister wanted to be a teacher growing up and I was her first student. <laughs> she had me reading books before I was even in kindergarten and I was reading novels by the time I was six or seven. So I love books, but I know not everyone feels the same way as I do. Thankfully, audiobooks are a great alternative if you are not one to sit and read. You can listen to them on the way to work or while you're waiting for your kids to get done with soccer practice. My favorite book to start with is Florida Fruit and Vegetable Gardening by Robert Bowden. It's a great beginner book that dives deep into each vegetable and fruit and gives some extra information than what the UF website provides. Once you've made it past the beginner stage, let's move to the intermediate level. For websites, I like flgardening.com. 
They have lots of information on different veggies and includes things about controlling pests and diseases, how to fertilize, soil requirements, different varieties, the whole thing. <laughs> the thing I really like about the site is that not only does it give you great information, it's easy to read and understand, and the guy who runs it sells seasonal variety packs. Basically, it's a pack of seeds for everything that can grow that season. Florida friendly varieties. They are all heirloom open pollinated so you can save your own seed, which is that next level of gardening. If you've had struggles with varieties, try his packs because they are a great next step. Other websites are things like Facebook's gardening groups like the native Florida groups or the, uh, the fruit and veggie Florida groups. They usually split them up by like North, Central, and South Florida, which is helpful since North and South can be very different and Central Florida kind of lives in the in-between. Now, <laughs> be cautious with the comments of these groups. Sometimes they are super helpful and sometimes they are way off, but it is a great place to get pointed in the right direction or at the very least it can help you get connected with your local gardening groups to do things like plant swaps and learn about the best nurseries in your area to visit. It's a fun way of making a bunch of new friends. And don't forget YouTube. Man, I love YouTube. <laughs> Even before I was a content creator, I was a big consumer. And there is just something about watching someone grow a plant on video that gives you even more information than anything you could read. It's real life and it's in a video so you don't miss any step. And you can leave comments and interact with other subscribers. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I love local YouTubers and I fully support, support that you should be following someone in your area or state. I'd be tickled pink if you would subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. But if not me, find someone locally. I do watch a lot of other channels in other states too because there's always something you can learn from them even if the timing is different or the climate is different. I watch Alaska gardeners and that's about as different as you can get from here in Florida. But I've learned a lot from them about how to grow things up fast in a short season. Their short season is summer, but ours is like fall and spring. So learning how they speed things up gives me a lot of really good ideas. Besides website, other books I like are Florida's Survival Garden by David the Good. He also has a YouTube channel. Um, he has a really interesting gardening style. He's really into these grocery roar gardens and mixing different fruits and veggies in the same row, using organic methods for fertilizing and planting. It's pretty interesting. The other book I like is The Perennial Vegetables by Eric Tonsmeyer. It's not specific to Florida, but it has all kinds of great information on a ton of perennial vegetables that you can plant once and then feed you for years to come, which is pretty cool. Warning though, not all these perennials will work here, so do a little bit of research. Another really great resource that I follow a ton from is local farmers. Want to know how I find them? I go to my farmer's market in my area and just strike up a conversation. I learn so much. It is crazy. Growing organically is not easy. And these farmers, well, not all are organic, but the ones that are, are doing it in a large scale. And I just have to know their tricks. They took the time to talk to me about soil and pests and how they do it. And it's really a huge benefit for me. So whenever you get a chance to talk to another gardener or farmer, don't be shy. I promise that they are just like us. They are just as passionate about their farm as we are about our garden, and they usually just adore talking about it. So put yourself out there and start chatting. <laughs> Sorry, friends, I had to uh, step inside for a second because it became like obscene raining. Like it was kind of crazy. It got so dark, like I couldn't barely see the camera. So I'm pretty sure you were starting to not be able to see me. <laughs> now that we're back, let's talk about the next stage of learning that I personally am at. I think this level is super interesting because instead of just reading and learning from others, you are now learning and experience from your own actions. If you've learned something new, head down and hit the like button so I know that this is something you guys are interested in or found helpful. Now, I don't talk about my faith a lot on this channel, but when I was thinking about this video, this Bible verse popped in my mind. 
I understand not all my viewers share my same faith and that is perfectly fine, but I think you will still get something out of this. So the verse goes, it's, it's on Romans 1 20. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see with their eyes as such can't see eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. If that version doesn't sound super familiar, it's because I'm using the message version, which is just an easier way of reading the Bible. So basically, what that means is that by observing the physical world, you can see the work of the Creator, and it can't be denied because of what He has created is so big. The reason I bring this up is because sometimes in all the learning and reading and studying, we forget that our own experiences and observations are a type of learning that we can build new assumptions and theories from. Your garden is unlike any other garden anywhere because your specific space is unique. It's what we normally call a microclimate. Even my next door neighbor would experience different outcomes in their garden than I do because of the shade the trees create or the different plants we grow that attract different types of bugs and pollinators. Nobody is going to be able to tell you how to improve your specific garden except for you to some extent. So how do you do that? How do you form these new theories and assumptions? Let's head back to middle school and break out this scientific method. Observe, question, theory, predict, test, assess, change, and repeat. I'll give you an example. Watermelons have been something I have struggled with for several years, but I made progress every year using this methodology. When I first started, I used what I knew, which was that watermelons love to grow when it's hot. So my question was, will they grow in Florida summer? <laughs> my theory was that our intense heat could help them to grow faster and ripen quicker than other places. I predicted that I could harvest watermelons 14 days earlier than what the packet says because of my theory. Then I tested it, and that did not happen. <laughs> My plants were destroyed by fungal disease and pets, specifically the pickle, uh, the pickle worm, and then of course powdery mildew was everywhere. My assessment was that even though our summers are warm, they are also very wet and humid, leading to a higher rate of disease and pests. I decided to change one factor at a time. I wanted to focus on the disease first, so I changed the growing time to spring, which is still very warm but it's our drought season, so the rain is minimal. I grew them the following spring and the plants made it to maturity and started setting fruit. I knew I was onto something. Now I knew that spring was a winner for me, so then I moved on to the pest pressure issue. Each time I grew them, I adjusted just one thing at a time. I've done this with just about all my plants. Some I've been able to figure out their best growing conditions in my garden and some I'm still working on. But each season, I'm getting better and better. Now, you can't do this with every single plant in the garden on one season. That would just be too much going on. Start with two or three plants and make a goal to adjust just one factor based on what you currently know and what you are observing. The nice thing about this method of learning your own garden is that when things go wrong, you don't blame yourself or the scientific method. You blame the variables. Then you change them and test if they improved the issues. It's all learning. It's not failure. And I love that frame of mind. If you have other resources that you regularly use to learn more about gardening, head down in the comments and leave a note. I think this will be an awesome way for all of us to share our knowledge and experiences. If you want to watch a couple more of my videos, I'm going to pop them up right here. You can check those out between now and my next upload. Happy gardening, guys, and learning.